Okay, so we're going to do another example where we have one object colliding with another stationary object and they have different masses now. So we're going to say that mass 1 is 2 kilograms and it's going to be colliding into another that is actually 8 kilograms, mass 2. So this guy's original velocity is stationary, it's 0. So we're going to call V0 the colliding velocity. Mass 1 is going to be a hitting mass 2 at 12 meters a second. And then afterwards, they're going to bounce apart. So we have mass 1, which will stay the same, and mass 2, which will stay the same. But they're going to have a velocity for each of them. OK, so again, let's first work on momentum, and then we'll work on kinetic energy. All right, originally the momentum is mass times velocity, which in this case would be 2 times 12, which is 24. And in the end, we're going to have this, which is 2 times the velocity, v1, whatever that is, and the mass of 8 times v2. And again, before you move on, think, can you divide anything out? Here, I can divide everything by 2. So just to make our lives a little easier, and this will be 4v2. All right, for kinetic energy, we do the same idea, except with kinetic energy formula. So in the beginning, we're going to have 1 half times 2 times 12 squared and mass 1 is the only one with kinetic energy because it's the only one moving. On the other side, we're going to have 1 half m1, which actually we know m1 is 2 still, times v1 squared plus 1 half times 8 times v2 squared. So again, another equation with v1 and v2, which we don't know yet. Let's multiply this out. So 1 half times 2 is just 1. This would be 144 equals 1 times v1 squared and 4 times v2 squared. All right, now we need to get one of these equations to get one variable alone so that we can plug it into the other. And I'm thinking right here we can get v1 alone very easily. So if I subtract 4v2 to the other side, that's going to be v1. So instead of writing v1 in the other equation, I'm going to plug in 12 minus 4v squared. So right here, instead of v1, 12 minus 4v2 squared plus 4v2 squared. Okay, and the, here we go on to some math. We have 144 equals, and again, I'm going to have to foil this out. There's two of them. Which, by the way, if you need practice on that, just search up how to foil on YouTube. There will be lots, lots that you'll be able to practice with. Lots of examples. Okay, so I foiled that out. And notice I have 144 on both sides, so I can subtract 144 on both sides. I'll have 0 equals, I have actually 20 v2 squareds, and then I have minus 8 v2. And just like last example, I'm going to factor out as much as I can. I can actually divide by 4 and take out a v2. So I have a v2 here, minus 2. So I have two answers. V2 could be 0, but we know it's not going to be 0. It's going to actually be the other answer here. So V2 in this case is going to be 2. Uh, and I paused for a second because I realized something here. When I foiled this out, this number is incorrect. Let's go back and let's go back and resolve this. 
when I FOIL out 12 minus 4V times 12 minus 4V, I'm going to get 144, but I'm going to get these two, which are both negative 48V. So really, I should have negative 96V squared. Ugh, sorry about that. If I could go back and just and just edit this video, I would. <laughs> All right, so let's divide now. What goes into 20 and 96? Well, actually, at this case, we could just do V2, and we would have V2 minus uh, 20 V2 minus 96. Now, if this was 0, that would mean the second velocity is 0, but that's not going to be the answer. We have to see when this is 0. So I can actually just set it equal to 0 and solve. V2 is going to be 96 all over 20. Which, when you take 96 divided by 20, that comes out to be, there we go, 4.8 meters per second. So my second object up here, the answer is going to be 4.8 meters per second. Now I have to go back though and figure out what is the velocity of the other object. So I'm going to go back to this red formula right here. The reason I do is because V2 I know. V1 is what I want. If I plug in 4.8 here, I will get the velocity of the first object. So 12 minus 4 times 4.8, I'm getting negative 7.2. All right, so negative 7.2. Now, what does that mean? That means that the larger object was pushed forward and it now has a velocity of 4.8. But the first object, because it's so much lighter, is actually bouncing off the object and coming back with a speed of 7.2 meters per second. So when they bounced, they actually separated and bounced in opposite directions.